given that you know you're probably i mean i guess in you're the biggest fishery owner in the com- in the country now that um that there can't be anyone else with as many fisheries as embryo i don't, I don't know i think in terms of dedicated carp fishes yeah, yeah. i'd probably say so. so so from my perspective a great deal of what our carp fishing future looks like in the uk is in your hands um Right. You know, because there's going to be waters on everyone's doorstep in the end from embryo. They're probably going to be most areas of the country, or the, hopefully there are, you know, that your reach will extend to the, you know, out of the kind of central and southern heartlands into everyone's back back garden. You know, um, I know you've got stuff in Yorkshire. Um, not sure about Lancashire, you know, where I'm from, in Merseyside, where I'm from. Yeah, but, we have you know. tried. It's, right. Yeah, this, it, we do want one in the northwest. But yeah. obviously the clubs up there have... Strong yeah. still. Strong, yeah, yeah, and they're doing a good yeah. job. And You've uh, fenced my local fishery. Oh, which one's that, Ty? The um, the Icarp Lakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. done on them. Yeah, they look really good, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really good. Yeah, they're really smart. Yeah, it's a cool little site, that, isn't it? Oh, mate, love it. I'm going this weekend. <laughs> but, you know, the fish that you stock now are going to outlast us all, um, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully they don't, to be fair, and we live to like 100. Yeah, but, that's you know, a much better uh, outcome, yeah. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, they, you know, but... And, and they live to 100 as well, but you never yeah, know. Yeah. Um, how much responsibility do you feel to us as a wider community that, the, you know, that you make the right choices on stock? Because all I see now is a, is a relative, um, I'm trying to think of a simpler way of putting it, carp kind of start looking the same um, because of where we are and because of the way we've been when you had this kind of wild west period in the 80s probably when fish were moved around wholesale everywhere chopped and changed uh, they looked totally different you had the chocolate box type waters whereas now that isn't you know you can't create waters with where well, every carp looks different right or can you it, it, it's definitely a thing so the i know we, we have sort of touched on this briefly before but the it you're on the scale that we do it, mm. um, the commercial fisheries, we, we try and be fair to people. So we, we can't buy fish off everyone. So we obviously we use Simon and Viv and we use Simo and we use uh, Tom and Jez at Priory. Yeah. Uh, we've bought some from Ross in the past as well. Um, we do try and mix it up. Uh, and I because guess you're a guy that appreciates a mixed stock, Matt. Yes, absolutely. And I think... And so is Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Fair. And I think there's... I know we, we did talk about this before, but like one of the things for me that growing up, that regional thing, I liked that. Like you could see that one's from Cambridge, that one's from Oxford, that one's from Kent, that one's from yeah. Bedfordshire. You could see it, you know, they, that those hubs of where those fish came from, it, that that was good. I like that. And that. actually we've been fantastically bad at preserving those. Scotty has done probably as much as anybody yeah. with the VS stuff to preserve some strains. Yeah. But as a sport, we've we've dropped the ball, haven't we? Really? If yeah. You, I, what if you're interested in carp looking different? Yeah, I think it's again <laughs> what you realise is you're. It, there's a percentage of people like you know me and you who would who would care about that. There's uh, probably a much much larger percentage with the guys I go out mm-hmm. and spend time with out around the fisheries who are, are not as fast. Uh, I will they be just a, look a, a pretty carp. Pretty they're, carp. They're blown nice away with it. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. fair play. You know that. It's it is horses for courses. We we are doing some things to try and preserve some of those. I used to use the term heritage strains, but I've seen that online a few times now, so I'll have to change that up. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but you, you know what I'm saying. Like, well, heritage like, simply means what we had when we came into the sport, right? So yeah, th- these are the things that were around that we inherited from our, you know, forebears. Yeah. So, so so we've got Shuttleworth uh, College, yeah. um, the the fisheries course there. Um, Neil, who's sort of the assistant down there, Neil Sampson. He, we're working with him, so we've we've purpose dug a number of little ponds there mm. and uh we're trying to we've we've had a couple of failed attempts of bringing in eggs from these kind of um older style fish mm-hmm. let's call it that and and growing those through that's something as we speak that we'll, we'll be looking to do again with some potentially wall pack fish uh some some fish from potentially another special lake um we have to do that all legit so that's all got to be done through cfas it's it, there's a lot of things that need to fall right to do that. Which which, which is kind of where the, the mastery that someone like Scotty and experience he has 
is brought to bear because he's been able to fully realise that process 100%. with the harrow fish and and some of the other fish that he's yeah, got. Suttons and the, yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, it's it, it's very much uh, it it's to do it on a on a big scale for us is difficult. We do we are trying to do that. Um, it will we will always buy fish from those guys. Yeah, they all do great fish. We. Uh, they're all really good to us. Well, your as well. appetite for fish must be vast in a year. It can be. It's, yeah. it's it, some years it's extreme. Other years not as much. Depends what comes online. But it's compared to most, it's pretty vast. Mm. Um, and all of those guys have given us. All the people I just mentioned have given us a load of help over the years. Like a load of help. Uh, their fish are really good. So we will always buy fish from. Always buy fish from them because we'll you know because of the scale of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Within that mix, some of those Shuttleworth fish I'd like to think will come through and, and fit into maybe some niche venues and venues where they're not going to race up to, to £40 overnight. Uh, you know, I know when Elbow came and filmed at the Ruffs, we've got a few interesting fish in there that we're, it's a long game. You know, it's a cool lake with some lovely little fish. So that there is always an element of that and it it's trying to fit it in. Uh, it's a personal interest of mine, that, as you know. And, it's and, and if your personal interest can't be indulged, Matt, then something's wrong because obviously it makes it only makes sense for Embryo to balance the books, right? Really. Yeah. But yeah. but that's not what you're going to do. You're, you're going to have these projects still that don't make financial sense necessarily at the moment. Yeah, I think we, we, we when we first started, we were very scattergun. Yeah. We had so many, as you, the ambition on what we wanted to do, it, it's set now. So things like this, the, the Shuttleworth project mm -hmm. being a good case in point, that's been a bit kind of here, there and everywhere. It's now just, it, oh. we're waiting the next set of eggs and that will work. And it it's great because the kids at Shuttleworth are going to have that year working on them from the hatchery right the way through the system over the years. And eventually we get some fish on the back end, which are, you know, nice, interesting fish. So that's the kind of thing. So that is cost neutral mm -hmm. in essence, that however many we get out of the back end is our reward for doing it. And the kids get to get to, you know, work experience on the job at the college. So yep. things like that are, are really good, but they've not always worked as well, well as that. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> funny, we were chatting to, to Damien in the office briefly. Um, we shot a podcast yesterday and he remembers when you first started, your garage was crammed with, with fish rearing stuff, was it? I mean, you yes. perhaps couldn't be, I mean, it's come a long way from that, hasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, we won't, we definitely won't be going back there again. <laughs> that, you, Once again, your poor long-suffering missus was like, what What on earth is all this stuff? But, so yeah. I remember, I'll qu quickly talk about this, like the, so she'd cleared an area in the garden. Yeah. Uh, put this little patio bit I'm in. starting to have more sympathy with her as this goes yeah, on. That, that, right? there's, only, there's only one rational person in this game, but the, so she's got this patio area all sorted out and um she'd finished that weekend all looked nice planted some plants up the back and everything neither of us are gardeners so this was quite a deal and uh while she was at work we've lifted over the fence these two six by six green koi rearing tanks mm. for these uh fry to go in and they look like bins like huge biffer bins. Yeah. They've gone slap bang on side by side on this patio. And then my mates come around and put the electrics in. And by the time she's got home, it's all full of water and it's all starting up. All this built. I mean, <laughs> that is, that was close to getting divorced. <laughs> like seriously, like she, we don't really argue very much, but like there was two, yeah. three days. She weren't speaking to me after that. Yeah. Like that was, that was over the line, mm. massively over the line. 